BC, how are we? Thanks for plugging in again to channel Vinyl Boy Trigger. This is my third attempt to do this video. Um, and I picked up two strikes, copyright strikes. So I'll try to alter it. I don't know why. I haven't really done anything different to my other videos. So I don't know. Is it three strikes and you're out? So hopefully this won't be my last video. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been trying to upload a video and I had, I don't know, it didn't upload and I took it down, but then I realized that actually they sent me a lot of strike, copyright strike, and then I, I just um, edited a little bit and another one, so I'm just going to do a whole new video again because, anyway, it's, it's a bit of a pain because, you know, I put, I put everything away and all the stuff, but anyway, I want to show you guys and girls what I've got, so here we go again, so hopefully YouTube bosses think this is an acceptable <coughs> video. Okay, um, so these are vinyl finds and buys over the last, I think six weeks, something like that, so mostly from record stores and a couple from charity stores which have start to show some improvement. I um, just saw Billy Hurst did a record haul from charity store and it has been generally a worldwide drought. Um, there is some signs of resurgence. Cheers. Cup of tea. Sorry about the sound effects. Okay. Um, so yeah, a couple record store ones, I mean, sorry, these are charity stores, so I'm going to go for greatest hits, you know, that's coming home with me. Mental as anything, mouth to mouth, um, an Australian sort of pop rock band from the 80s, you can see the guys, they're sort of pretty quirky, you can check by their outfits, um, yeah, so pretty good. Leo from Too Much Metal is barely enough. Just showed some mental as anything. And James James Griffiths shows some as well. And he sort of equated them to Squeeze. Mm, I think there's another Australian band that's a little bit more Squeeze-ish like, which I will show one day. Anyway, they're from charity stalls. A couple of dollars each, so happy with that. Um, and another one from a charity store that I hadn't seen, obviously know this person, but hadn't seen any records with their names associated with it and with them on the record. So Fred Astaire, um, I saw recently and never seen one, but I didn't pick it up. But then I saw another one with Ginger Rogers. Um, it's, such a, such a, it's in actually really nice condition. So on the EMI. So I'll just pick it up for a couple of dollars. It's four of their shows, obviously the dancing duo of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Four shows, Top Hat. Showy Dance, The Gay Divorce, and Swing Time. So, I don't think they actually were that good friends off stage, I, heard, I read. Anyway, <clears throat> just nearly, nearly knocking this camera off. I'm using my iPad this time, um, and it's precariously positioned. Okay, record stores. A local record store, um, who I don't go to often, because the guy owns it, just spins... The just spins the the BS, um, and you don't need that, you know. You don't need him to, to bullshit to you. So I thought, stuff it. I'm not going back there again for quite a while, but six months or so. And I thought I'd drop in there because he actually has got a lot of pretty reasonable records. They're not in great condition. I mean, they're in good good condition. They're not a lot. Of, he hasn't got really VGs or minties. Um, but yeah, pretty reasonable price and a lot of stuff. So I dropped in again and picked up a few things. One of the first things I picked up was Huey Lewis and the News. Hey Huey and crew and the News. Sports. This is a classic album, classic songs. I've actually wanted this for quite a while, but I've never have found it. So happy to pick up a bit of Huey. <coughs> the Faces. A nod is as good as a wink. Um, yeah, so obviously it came from the Small Faces, and when Rod Stewart and Ronnie Wood joined in, cool, just rocking. What year was this? 
very distinctive, you know, of Rod Stewart's very distinctive voice. I'm not sure what year this is. I'm going to say 60s, 70s, early 70s, I'd say. Late 60s, something like that. Could be wrong. Um, yeah, cool. I really like the song Debris. Debris, Debris, from uh, Ronnie Lane on bass. It's quite a good track. And there's some good songs on there, so I was really happy to pick up that. Never seen one of those before. Um, and some Choir Boys, Australian rock band from the 80s, just a good rockin' band, um, so happy to pick up some stuff from them, I think that's my first, I've got a 12-inch a single, which is their probably most famous song called Run to Paradise, but yeah, this is just a rockin' album. And the last one I picked up from there, so all four of those I picked up for I think $35 for four of them. And I used a technique that a VC member had shown me had sh about uh, tips during record store shows or something like that, or tips when you're buying records, is because at this shop they don't accept card, it's all cash. Which is good because I just had limited cash, so I can't go over that. Uh, I think he's missing out, I think he's missing the missing some business doing it that way. Anyway, but it, the advice was that if you want to just get a little bit of, you know, a few dollars off some of the records, because this guy doesn't doesn't move, his price shown is what he charges, and, you know, give a little bit of slack, mate. Um, just hand the money in cash while you grab, while you have the record and say, is that is that okay for that? And I did use that. I think that Choir Boys was $10, so it would have been $40 for four albums. I'm going to show you in a sec the fourth one. But I had 35 so I said, it's 35 all right for this, mate, and had the cash there with the records there, and he was... It threw him, which, and he said, uh, okay, sweet. So the fourth one of that quad, quad pickup I picked up was the famous colored duo, and I have got the red one. Awesome. Got these both on CD, but haven't got them on vinyl, so so stoked to pick that up. It's a $10. Oh, mate, quintessential, quintessential Beatles compilation red and I'm just looking for the blue now. Um, let's get with the gatefold. That boy seems to be inside the perimeter. How did he get in there? Is there a story behind that? You know, just the ultimate comps uh, for the Beatles, red and blue. I really don't think you need any other compilation. So I've got Beatles number ones, uh, I've got Beatle ballads, and I think I've got Essential Beatles which is a comp as well. I don't I don't really listen to them much, but I'll be listening to the red, and when I get the blue, I'll be listening to that. So I think red and blue, that's all you need for compilations for Beatles, in my, excuse me, in my opinion. Cheers. Okay, uh, now these are from record stores, mostly in Sydney, when I get down there now and again. Van Morrison, this one's uh, Into the Music. So, you know, if I see Van Morrison at a reasonably price, I'm going to pick him up. Um, obviously, Bright Side of the Road, most famous one, song on this. <laughs> Didn't blow me away, this album, but I was happy to have it. Um, sort of tailed off a bit in side one. Side two, The Healing Has Begun. Probably a notable one. Um, yeah, nice. I sort of... I, mean, I really like Van Morrison. I'll continue to pick up some of his some of his works. I find that I grew up listening to the Greatest Hits album, which is somewhere in CD, somewhere in there, probably a bit hard to get out now. Um, and it that one with the Greatest Hits had the um, the old sort of style microphone on the front of the on the front cover, black cover with the old style microphone. Um, sort of Chris Isaac sort of like singing once. Um, and I'm used to that CD. So when I, I, what I find with Van Morrison is that his best stuff is really spread out over his whole discography. So what I find is probably two notable songs on each album that I haven't explored them enough really. So that's what I'm doing, exploring them more. But I find that I, I really know one or two, maybe three songs on them and the others I don't really know about and haven't really connected with yet. So, so he's quite spread out, but yeah. Happy with Van. Now they're Neil Young. He's definitely someone I'm pick, picking up. Probably three bands. Three, though, four. <laughs> three bands I pick up. I'm at this moment. I'm trying to finish discography, and that is Neil Young, Pink Floyd, and ACDC. 
James and Nutty Vinyl Professor. He showed this one recently. Neil Young, Stars and Bars. It's good, I like it. It's just Neil Young. Classic cover, isn't it? With sort of Neil's head getting squashed. Well, oh, he's just. I think he's a bit inebriated and head on the floor, obviously, in the Canadian Scotch Club. Don't know what it is there. But anyway, yeah, so. Uh, what's this one on? Just to show you guys. Ah, oh, the old reprise. It's his, I think that's his label, isn't it? Um, happy to get that. Uh, yeah, just Neil Young. If I had a choice at the first listen, so I listened to the that one and that one, the first listens, I have listened to all these albums probably once, so I can't give you a full description of them. But yeah, I would go with that one's a better listen than that one, first up. But yeah, Neil, love him. This one was a bit of a blind buy, uh, and it's what's playing in the background. Senator Flux, the criminal specialist. A bit of an indie US rock band from the 90s. They had about four albums. This was $5. It's a pretty cool cover, so I thought, that's coming home with me. I did actually put it on the turntable at the record store, and I liked it. It's pretty cool. So I think their latest, their, their last two albums are generally considered better than their first two. So Senator Flux, do you guys know them at all? Now, the next few are bands that I have had no media at all. So CD, tape, and vinyl. So nothing at all I've had of theirs before. So really happy to get them and add them into my collection. Let me just... This is a non-automatic returning. So I will show... This is my secondary system, which is coming close to the first system. Both on pole position. I will show that one day. These are all charity store pickups. Okay, so, so three the next three bands, uh, I've never had any media at all and I've really wanted something. I wanted something from T-Rex and I got something from T-Rex. Um, the name sort of, I don't know why I call it Mark Boland and T-Rex, it is T-Rex. Uh, it's like an advertising sort of, uh, <clears throat> you know, sort of, sort of advertising What's the word? I'm lost the word. The uh, marketing sort of camp um, campaign idea on Dino Records. I mean, T Rex. This is it's a compilation. I think it's only Australian only, but it's got all it's all the classic songs on there. Yeah, have a look at those. Um, all the classic songs. T Rex, get it on. I mean, I think. Pretty much most people know about Mark Bolan, how talented he was with John's Children and Tyrannosaurus Rex and dying in a car accident and he actually never had a driver's license. He was, um, even though there seems to be a lot of songs about motorized, like about cars and stuff. So anyway, so happy to get T-Rex and it sounds great. T-Rex, great. Very happy to get that. This is a band that I wouldn't have picked up unless I heard about people talked about them in the VC and they generally got a lot of love in the VC and I never have seen one before and when I saw one for $10 I picked it up The Grateful Dead their fans are called the Dead the Deadheads aren't they so Working Man's Dead just I don't think that's the way it's supposed to go it's sort of got it around the other way um sorry I don't want to give you any head spins on the Warner Brother um Folk, blues, rock. Um, it's really nice sounding. I'm really happy with that. I'm not sure if this is different to the other stuff. I think this was one of their best sellers. Um, so, yeah, so really happy to get, become part of the Deadhead Society. <laughs> That's probably one of them before. <laughs> um, and the other band I picked up for the first time, they knew them moderately well. Depeche Mode. Uh, I know Lou at Daddy Sensei Silver recently showed um, some Depeche Mode. He's only got one or two, and I told him I just got my first one. This is the single, not the compilation, like sort of T Rex. Not a good way to start. And just classic songs on there. Um, hopefully, this is the right way around, you're seeing it. Um, yeah, so, you know, synth pop, electronic. I didn't really probably realize how electronic they were. Um, this is a gatefold. Very cool. Um, this one was twenty dollars. 
But yeah, so really happy to get some Depeche Mode in my collection. This is on a pretty cool label, the Mute label. Always the wrong way around, isn't it? So a bit of Mute Records. So really stoked to get that, some Depeche Mode, and get three new bands on vinyl for me. Um, okay. <clears throat> Actually, I forgot to mention, I also got a book and some VHS tapes. I might show you the book now. Actually, before I do that, the I've got this so three VHS v, v, VHS tapes. Um, they're a box set of a movie, and I'm going to give you a line from the movie. I want you, and I'll tell you which movie it is at the end of the video. The line goes: Two days ago, I saw a. V uh, try again. Two days ago, I saw a vehicle that could pull that trailer. You want to get out of here alive? You come and talk to me. So try and think of what movie that's, that, that, that line is from. I love that line. <laughs> um, now, the book I got is Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. It's my son's name, Ollie. <laughs> Ian, Ian Molly Meldrum. Now, this guy is a legend of Australian music. Um, he's, not a, he's not a performer. He's a record producer. He's a journalist. Um, and he was the, the host of Countdown, so a music um, show on TV, sort of like equivalent to like Top of the Pops. Um, he really unearthed a lot of Aussie bears. That was his big thing to try and um, showcase local talent. But he's also very well known internationally with a lot of international acts. This is a classic read. I've only read the first three chapters actually, um, and it's hilarious. He um, he's a legend. Um, he's he's still around. He's Sort of in his 60s or 70s, I guess now. He actually had an accident where he fell off his roof after climbing up on a ladder. And he had a head injury and he's not quite himself. Um, but he he done journalism, written, you know, for, me, for, new, for um, TV, for magazines. Um, and interviewed all the big stars. Not just Australian sort of talent, all the big stars. Um, he actually worked at Apple Studios on Abbey Road, I think it was on Abbey Road, um, and he met the Beatles, he, he idolised the Beatles, he was, he loved them. Um, he, um, he actually broke the story, the first one, one of the first reporters to break the story that the Beatles would be breaking up, and also one of the first people, um, John Lennon actually wanted to tell him that it was either about the breaking up or it was about um, him breaking up with his wife and hooking up with Yoko. So he was well connected. Um, he tells a story when he first saw the Beatles, like when he first heard the Beatles uh, album, Please Please Me, he just was stunned. He wanted to be involved in that. Um, is anyone out there that was sort of in that same sort of age vintage that when the, is that the same sort of feeling you had when the Beatles come out? It was just something new, fresh, amazing, bright. Um, it was just something he wanted to be involved in, and he went to their concert when they came to Australia. But Molly had this, he was a little bit clumsy, and he had this sort of knack of, or this habit of um, fainting a lot when he got too excited. So he was screaming like the other thousands of people do when, be when the Beatles turn up. Um, he'd be chasing them, screaming. Um, he'd be waiting for them in car parks, like, all night. He, I think he, you know, waited for days to get a ticket, like two days in the line to get a ticket when they first coming to Australia, and he actually got so excited during that concert, he, he fainted, and the security guard thought he was just drunk or just being stupid and just playing up, so they threw him out, so he told a story about that, how he, and I think they were playing Long Tall Sally as he got kicked out, that's one of his favourite songs. Um, he tells a story how he was having dinner and he met Paul McCartney and he went to shake his hand, he still had a knife in his hand, um... He, when he met first met John Lennon, he he was drinking. They said the standard drink at Apple Studios was uh, Scotch and Coke. And when John Lennon was introduced to Molly, um, his proper name is Ian Meldrum, but known as Molly Meldrum, um, he had another fainting episode and ended up, he was introduced to John Lennon as, this is your biggest fan, um, John. And as I say, Molly, Molly, Molly fainted and spilled his drink over John Lennon. And John Lennon sort of said, oh, if that's my biggest fan, I don't want to meet my enemies. Uh, and another funny story, right? This is only the first three chapters, like he's writing stories like this, where, where he first met Paul McCartney, or well, first or second time, and he heard him having a massive argument with uh, their manager about a phone bill. And he was thinking, 
Paul McCartney's arguing about a phone bill. He's to him, he was the richest person in the world. So there's some great stories going to come out of this. So if you want to hear some more stuff, well, let me know because oh, cool. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Um, Hudigurus, Mars needs guitars. Um, I did a unearthing on these guys. Great Aussie rock, um, power power rock, garage rock. Really cool stuff. Um, if you don't know them, check them out. They're a really enjoyable band. Um, Nutty James mentioned to me that, you know, great names. They've got Mars Needs Guitars, and their, one of their other albums was called Stine, not Stine, uh, Stone Age Romeos. They said some bands have got the knack of getting great names, so very cool. Who the gurus? One of the other band, one of the three bands I'm trying to complete discography, and I've been looking for this one for a while. The Floyd Metal. So stoked to find this. This was only ten dollars. Uh, original Aussie um, pressing. It it had on it check condition on their standard Harvest label. Um, not too bad. I could list, I listened to it at the record store. There's a few scratches on there. It plays fine. It's a great album. Love it. Love it. Uh, Peter Kent did a review of this. Another VC Aussie member. And he gave it eight and a half out of ten. I think I'd give it the same actually. I'd go eight and a half out of ten. <coughs> In excess, another Aussie for you. Listen like thieves. Great, great fold, great fold, gatefold of the boys. Um, yeah, this is a great album. Um, this is my third In Excess now. I'll show you the label. What are we on here? Oh, a bit of WEA. Um, yeah, so probably the biggest three biggest songs are the first three. So What You Need, Listen Like These, and Kiss the Dirt. But this continues on with some really good stuff. Shine Like It Does, a good song. Um, Biting Bullets, Same Direction. Nice picture there as well. The guys, Paul Michael, who unfortunately left us too early, like so many musos. Imagine how music would have changed if we didn't lose all those people. Hendrix and Mark Bowl and you know, Michael Hutchins and... Jeff Buckley and all those people, man, jeez. Wow. And during my previous video attempts, I had a, I bought a brand new record. Um, I don't normally buy brand new records because they're on the expensive side. This is a repress, 2010 repress. But I did see this at the record store once before and I thought if I ever, if I go back again and it's still there, I'll pick it up. I nearly didn't. I nearly walked out without picking it up and thought, just pick it up. Final Ball Trigger, Roscoe, Trigger, whatever you like to call me or whatever I call myself. <laughs> a few more profanities. Um, pick it up. And I did, so really stoked. And I actually did a needle drop on, so I, un, so I unsealed it on that last video and needle drop. So I think maybe that's, I did a needle drop for too long, so I think maybe that's why uh, I got copyrighted. So, access bold as love. Love it, so stoked to get it. Classic cover. Um, gatefold, love it. Got some weird talking at the start, isn't he? Like um, Jimmy's sort of impersonating someone. Label, pink on that side, green on that side. You get the picture. Really cool, so stoked to get it. So, Lisa, woo Work nearly up. Um, Six was nine, I think was my standout. When I listened to it once, love it. So that is it. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted. Oh, better sh show you the movie. So did you get the movie at all? Mad Max, the trilogy. So box set, this is actually, they're all sealed, brand new, unopened before. So really stoked to get that. I don't have a VHS player. The Road Warrior, that's probably the best, isn't it? Hey, they're all great. Um... That one, that's the second one actually. The first one, it's actually R-rated. <laughs> um, Mad Max, classic. Jeez, what year was that from? 80 something? I don't know. I'm going to say 82. Could be wrong. Okay, so thank you. Um, hopefully I don't get again. Otherwise, that could be it. My adventure over. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care, VC.